Brady. Hello, my name is Joe Lynch, and I'm the host of this webinar. Um, my company is The Logistics of Logistics, and today's webinar is Keys to Developing High-Performing 3PL Sales Team, and it'll be presented by my friend and colleague, Ann Holm. Um, I sometimes do work with Ann Holm. She's an excellent resource for transportation and logistics people like myself. So without further delay, I will hand it over to Ann. Okay. And I'm really glad to be here, and I just want to tell you a little bit about myself so you know who's behind the screen. Um, my name is Ann Holm, and I am a professional certified coach uh, since 2008, and I focus on executive and, and career development, so helping individuals not only know who they are, be at their best, but leverage that in ways that will uh, make them better at their job um, and even in their home life. Um, I help people uncover their potential. Um, I help them develop their talent. Um, some of the th tools that I use, I'm a Myers-Briggs personality assessment uh, master practitioner. Um, I have uh, some background in emotional intelligence, uh, this idea of 360 feedback. So not only how do you see yourself, but to how do others see you? Because that's actually uh, half the equation. Um, my background, too, is that I have bachelor's and master's degrees from University of Michigan. And prior to uh, coaching, I actually worked with brain injured clients. So my whole life really has been around people, helping people be at their very, very, very best, uh, meeting, meeting them where they are and moving them forward. So, but we're going to talk about uh, these concepts in the context of logistics sales teams. So before we even get to what I have to say, I want to ask you what is on your agenda today. What would you like to learn in this webinar? We hit that topic or that. Please theme. use that chat feature. Yep. What What would you like to learn? And, and I should also say while we're waiting while we're waiting for people to you know ask answer what they hope to learn today, I should tell you that I met Anne seven eight years ago. You know, when she became my executive coach, I was running a little 3PL. And um, it was really a breath of fresh air because, you know, we tend to, we t tend to um, drink our own Kool-Aid after a while. And having an outside coach who understood my personality type and understood also business. She works with business people, so she understands. And um, lead generation and sales, she had insights into our business that were just, they, they turned my head around and we were very successful using Anne and now I work with her. So we're having a lot of success together. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am seeing some questions. So salespeople dialing for potential customers every day can be exhausting. How do you keep the team motivated? Uh, very good question. Okay, and there's another one is how do we do, how do we, how do we stay effective or how do we do training when we're um, on the phones all day? and can't get away from the desk, which we hear all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any other any other uh, things you're hoping to learn? Tom, James, John? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, we'll get started. If all something right, well, we will continue you, on. Yep, if something occurs to you, just please put it in the chat box. Okay, so um, I want to start off with first looking at sales in general. And one of the resources that I uh, looked at was a website called Sales Hack. And Sales Hack is a website that talks about um, how, what are the best practices, what are the best ways to become better at your sales job. And so there was one article that, th that was on the site that talked about the five suggestions for building a high-performing sales team, um, according to Sales Hack. And so the five elements that were listed were uh, talent development, uh, coaching and continuous feedback, uh, leading by example. So those that are at the top of the, of the sales team lead by example, show both appreciation but, account but demand accountability so that you're looking at both pieces of that equation, appreciate and hold accountable. And then also celebrate the small wins and have fun because it certainly can be um, drudgery if um, it's always a nose to the grindstone, but uh, you're not um, enjoying it. You need to fill your tank somehow. So 
Uh, I'm going to be talking about primarily um, the, the, uh, the pieces of number one and number two, the idea of talent development and the role of coaching and continuous feedback to achieve maximum talent, uh, talent development. That's sort of my, my neck of the woods. That's, that's where I operate from. So um, how you develop your sales team has a big impact actually on your logistics business. This is a, it's a very technical field. Logistics is a technical field and it keep, continues to become more and more technical with software. And um, now they're looking at blockchain and some of these other uh, technical aspects of it. Um, however, it's really important to consider the people aspect of it. Uh, you're still dealing with human customers and you're still dealing with decision makers that are humans as well. So what I found in the supply chain quarterly was a um, uh, quote that said, supply chain scorecards typically focus on operational metrics. It is a technical field, but if companies want to capture a true picture of supply chain success, they need to measure employees in a personal performance too. So uh, supply chain quarterly uh, has asserted that yes, it is a technical field, but we, we can't lean so far to the technical that we forget the development of our people. So, um, so I'm gonna talk about three uh, key ways in which you can develop uh, your sales force and, uh, and your talent. So the first key is that effective salespeople are self-aware. Uh, there's the self-awareness has been um, in the news lately uh, in the business news. For, for instance, the Harvard, Harvard Business Review has talked about uh, self-awareness being very key in uh, career success. So uh, what does it mean to be self-aware? Well, it means, you know, what are your strengths and what are your blind spots? How well do you know what you do well? Uh, how well do you know what energizes you or brings you, uh, makes you bring your A game? Um, and what is a challenge and what stands in your way? Uh, that is sort of the core uh, of self-awareness. That's at least the first step of it. You, you create the self-awareness and then in that you decide, well, what's the impact on the work that I'm doing? Um, and how can I make some changes to become even more effective? So that's step one. Effective salespeople are self-aware. And it's interesting. I love this metaphor when I'm working with logistics people. Um, Personality blind spots are really similar to trucking blind spots. Um, they hold these characteristics in common. Um, we can't see them, but we usually know that they're there. So you have an awareness that there's something that's not, not right in your side view mirror and your rear view mirror. You know there's a blind spot and you know you have to look for it. And uh, you can't ignore them because if you did, you could have potentially dangerous consequences. And so you need a strategy to address the blind spots so they don't get into your way. Just, you know, using the metaphor of driving, it's the same kind of thing. You have to know what your blind spots are. You can't ignore them and you need a strategy, strategy so they don't take you down. So that's key number one, self-awareness. What are your strengths? What are your blind spots? Has anybody um, had any training um, in their sales uh, work that talked about personality strengths and blind spots? Has that, uh, does that typically get addressed in uh, Salesforce training? Curious if anybody um, can weigh in on that. Well, and while while we're waiting for some responses, I can say because I went through <laughs> the training and uh, the coaching that you provided me, it was eye opening when um, I got my initial assessment because it 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 seemed like it was reading my mind. I guess it was. Um, I could all of a sudden say, "Yeah, these are my strengths," and yeah, those do look like my weaknesses. So, um, got another question here. Do we have a, another 
question. One of the one of the questions was one of the questions was related to you know they use personality testing for, um, for when they're hiring. Okay. Okay. So as part of a hiring um, screening process, is that typically how you encounter it? Yeah, I think that's what I think that's where they're okay. getting at. And then others are saying it's just they they don't use any of that when they're training. Okay, so it's really an idea of a screening process. So yes, yes, not not for staff development, but more for how do you hire. Okay, okay, yeah, and um, you know that is one potential use, but um, there are some drawbacks to that because then you're assuming that's kind of just what you have, and you're not uh, using the power of the assess of any kind of personality assessment, which is to help people say, okay, now I know this about myself. What can I do about it to make myself uh, better? So, um, yeah, it is. It can be used, and, and sometimes it's 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 a misuse of personality assessment is using it as a hiring tool. It's really a it's better placed in a um, developmental tool for helping people, all your staff, be at your be at their best. So, um, yeah, if I could add this, and if I could add this, one thing is having gone and I. Uh, been done the assessment and having a sense for where my weaknesses are may become less of a weakness. So if somebody was to test me, I'd like to think that I've, um, you know, made some adjustments to uh, mm -hmm. minimize my blind spots. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one, self-awareness, strengths and blind spots from the perspective of self-development and becoming better at your work and more engaged for that matter. Okay, the second key to developing an effective sales force is effective salespeople communicate and collaborate, collaborate well with their coworkers. So um, this becomes a question of, do you know what your communication style is and does it match well with coworkers or are there some, adapt uh, 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 some adaptations that you need to do so that you can communicate better with the individual that you are working with. Um, likewise, the question might be around collaboration. So um, everybody has uh, strengths. You might have individuals who are gregarious and really, really, really good about developing the, relation, the sales relationships, but maybe they have some blind spots around um, detail, follow through. Uh, so is there somebody else on the team that they can work with to overcome that? Or are there some strategies that they can use to make sure that that blind spot doesn't take them down. So um, effective sales pe people communicate and collaborate well with their coworkers, uh, makes for a more cohesive and powerful team. But if you don't have that self-awareness piece, it, it's difficult to maximize this effective uh, key. So, so let me give an example of what I'm talking about. So here's two individuals. Um, I happen to be the individual on the left with the parrot on my arm. And then on the right is a man that's almost as successful as I am, Warren Buffett. And so if you look at those, just those two uh, personalities, these adjectives that are associated with these two personalities, what sales strength do you think I would have? And what sales strength do you think Warren Buffett might have? And really thinking about it in the context of even logistics would be helpful. So, you know, what, what, what would I do well if I was a logistics salesperson? What would um, Warren Buffett do well as a, a logistics salesperson? I think Warren would be really good at sharing some, some information, being real clear about what, you know, understanding what the customer um, needed <laughs> and be very as it says precise about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um is it possible for instance that warren could be um seen as transactional and not uh, terribly friendly or um you know wanting to just get down to the bottom line um and he encounters somebody who um want something else, who wants to build uh, perhaps more of a relationship um, in the in the sales um, space. Um, 
What do you think about that? Okay. Um, even if they're, even if you're not responding, I hope you're at least thinking about it. That you know, I did see there is one comment here that okay. we should, and it says Warren would be a better analytical mind, um, numbers based, get to the get to the point type of guy. Yeah, that that would seem like him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you absolutely would. So if you needed, if the the customer that you were working with was looking for some very very specific information, and um, needed to, you know, he would be the guy for sure. Um, and it, it may be that whoever he encounters to get to the person who wants those details, may be somebody who wants him to be a little bit more warm and friendly. Uh, so that might be something that he would work on. Um, it's not to say he would stay very grounded in who he was, for sure. And then he would add another layer to his approach, uh, become a little bit flexible in his personality, and maybe just learn a few techniques to say, "Hey, how are you? Good morning." Maybe he already knows that. There's no, the, the, you know, the the intent is not to say this guy is definitely not going to be friendly. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if he's grounded in that and he wants to add even more power to his sales personality, he might start looking at picking. Uh, some things from other types of personalities to just add to it. So he's more effective. Okay. You, you know, and if you ever noticed um, Warren Buffett is, he always comes off as very friendly, but I think it's, it's something he had to learn over time. And Absolutely. Um, he talks a lot. If you've read, read about him, he talks a lot about taking Dale Carnegie training and realizing he had to learn it and he didn't like it. He didn't like the idea of speaking in groups and it was a it was a skill he developed. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that about him. That's that's interesting. And likewise, the individual on the left isn't going to be a flop in sales. They but they may need to make sure that they have done some mental preparation around details uh, to serve the customer. So um, either one of these individuals can work in sales roles, and in fact, they both do work in sales roles. Uh, but they have to uh, leverage different strengths and account for different blind spots. I didn't know that about Warren Buffett. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> yeah, if I could just add this, Anne, I am also an ENFP. Anne knows that because she's my executive coach. But um, when I first started working with her, she said, you're probably really good at the open, but you're probably not as good and you need to focus a little more on closing, asking harder questions, getting some of the um, details down. And there's a tendency for, I think, ENFPs to kind of say, yeah, I get this great relationship going and yes, everything is going well. And, and meanwhile, I'm supposed to be gathering more information and moving towards close. So just having that knowledge has been really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the third key in developing an effective sales por force is um, having your sales individual be able to adjust their communication style um, to the customer. So um, there's, uh, you know, we're, we're blind to our own way of doing things. And so we may come into a sales setting of assuming that the individual that we're going to be talking to are going, is going to want the same thing that we typically bring naturally to the equation. So um, effective salespeople know how to start to observe who they're dealing with and make those adjustments. So, for instance, um, if an individual tends to be um, introverted, so you're an extroverted person, you come to talk to somebody about a particular sales thing, and you notice that you're doing 85% of the talking, that individual might be introverted. And are you listening enough? Are you even leaving room for an individual to merge into that conversation? Um, that's, that's a common problem between introverts and extroverts is extroverts talking too much and introverts, uh, feeling, uh, like they can't find the inroad to get into that conversation. So learning how to watch for signs for, you know, who are you talking to? What adjustments do you need to make? That's the third piece in, uh, developing effective sales people. Um, Okay, so um, what I use is uh, the Myers-Briggs 
uh, indicator. I don't use the questionnaire and fill in bubbles, but I actually use an online system so people can start to learn about what all these differences are. So um, what we're trying, to, what we try to get at is what is your your core self. In other words, what do you do really naturally and something that you should leverage all the time? What's really, really, really um, core to who you are? Uh, then we look at, okay, so what have you learned? So Warren Buffett, for instance, learned through Dale Carnegie to become a better uh, communicator and uh, more comfortable with speaking. So those are learned behaviors. He still is that very technical guy, but he learned some things. And then on top of that, you in, you learn to read contexts so that you are in a different situation and you have to bring something else to the table altogether. So each of these personalities, these 16 personalities, each of these boxes just represents a summary of an individual's core personality. Um, and from that is when you then start building out other uh, other uh, aspects. So, um, so it's based on that particular instrument. Um, the, the, uh, the tool that I use when I'm working with salespeople is specifically tailored, though, to salespeople. So it's not just general uh, information, but it's tailored to the sales process. So here's one type. It's, uh, it's the, the person with the parrot on their arm, the ENFP sales person. So here's just a snippet of what they may do well as far as just the face-to-face the face-to-face uh, encounter. So they may be very good at being open and friendly and um, likable. They're able to, to, to create uh, relationships that are trusting relationships very, very, very quickly. And they also tend to be very flexible in terms of reading how other individuals operate. Some of their challenges though, and these are real challenges from the face-to-face perspective, is to remember to write down details from those conversations because they're so interested in the general feeling of that conversation, they may forget something quite specific that the client wants to know. Um, they may talk too much. This is a this particular personality is very extroverted. So they may talk and talk and talk and not gather information or learn how to listen. Uh, these are all skills that these people can learn, but if they don't even realize they're doing it because it's a blind spot, that's, that's when it becomes problematic. Um, oftentimes, in fact, our greatest strength might be, become a blind spot if it's overdone. So if you are um, a person who is open, friendly, chatty, creates great relationships, and you you leverage that and leverage that, but you don't pay attention to that other piece, it actually becomes a liability. And so when you come in on the scene, you might some, see somebody going, oh my gosh, here comes that chatty person again. So you have to, you have to know what, what you can develop. And these are all learnable skills and they get outlined in this report. Here's your strengths, here's some skills that uh, you might wanna learn, some very concrete tips. So, um, Logistics is a hectic business, though, and it's hard to get people in your room for sales training when the phones are ringing and you're trying to book a load. Some famous logistics of logistics uh, personality said that to me once. Yay. Yay. Um, so I'm going to ask you, as individuals who are in this space, is what do you think about that quote? Is that true, that it's hard to get all that training in place when you're busy trying to, to do your work at the same time? What do people encounter when um, those use that chat box, please? Yep, yeah, use the chat box. What do you encounter? What's what's the typical uh, training scenario like? <laughs> I like the one comment here. Um, Absolutely, we'll take it on tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes. I think that's um, yeah, very true. Is it's hard to get the training in? Yep, um, yep. So people Anna are. And I have talked about this in the past. Is is the challenge? Is the phones always ringing? Is I had staff staff meetings when I ran a three PL, and we could never get everybody into the same room at the same time, let alone do training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's an interesting thing too that um, I know that there's uh, 
there's a need to make a lot of phone calls when you're in the logistics business. And uh, it's ironic to be making all those phone calls without being equipped with some of the self-awareness that might make those phone calls go uh, better um, and be yep. and be more effective, you know. Um, well, th- th- it, there's another comment here, Anne, and it says salespeople yeah. need to be selling, not handling the operations on account, which is, it, it, it's interesting because some companies have the salespeople kind of that life cycle where they sell it and then they manage the account. Others, the sales guy is always in sales, and ops is always in ops, but mm-hmm. it depends on your organization. The, you know, this kind of awareness that Ann's talking about, this kind of a logistics assessment and coaching, is valuable for all both kinds, obviously. Yeah, and and so that therefore you there's a the idea that you're actually working together with other individuals, and the people who close the account want diff, or, or manage the account want diff, different information than people who are actually trying to create the leads. So, um, you know, equipping people with the um, a playbook on how other individuals operate, including your customers, actually does help to uh, to make those conversations go more smoothly and more successfully. But it is hard to get people into a room. Um, this is what I like about this particular instrument that I use. I use this thing called the Type Coach Personality Assessment. So this is a, it's a, a 20 minute interactive online assessment, um, and it is um, as you um, go through the assessment to find out what your strengths and blind spots are. It also will take you through some learning, so you understand the underpinnings of what's being talked about. You know, you this is this is the way you operate. This is how you're different from somebody who operates um, in a different way. And it's, so there's there's learning that goes with the assessment. So you're not filling out a questionnaire, which I think is, I, I think online learning plus assessment is 21st century way of training and not this fill out a questionnaire, here's your report. Um, the other thing I like about those is it's scalable. So large companies like Kraft um, Company uh, use this because it's scalable. It's something that a lot of people can do at once, um, and they can do it anytime they want to do it. So you get the link, and you go on, and you learn, and you get to report. So uh, the report that you get is nine pages long, and it'll tell you your overall strengths and blind spots. And it'll also talk about your strengths and blind spots in the context of sales. And if you're part of a sales team, um, in addition to that, you can start looking at, well, now that you know this about yourself, how do you interact with other individuals? And that's uh, there's a feature that is always available to you called type to type. So if you're a particular um, you are a, pers- a particular personality. So let's say you're the kind of, you're Warren Buffett, and you want to come in and ask me to do something for you, or I'm in charge of a particular sales transaction. Um, you can look on the site, and it'll say, "Okay, this is Warren Buffett. He's an ISTJ. He's going to go talk to um, Ann Holm, who is a, a, an ENFP." Here's top 10 tips on how to communicate with her. So it might be that you have a bunch of details that you want to tell me, but you might also know that you'll get a lot farther if you don't try to micromanage her. Um, And so you start to learn this so that you can have a successful transaction or a successful conversation right off the bat and build from there. Um, I know, for instance, if somebody comes and just hands me a bunch of detailed uh, tasks and tells me exactly what to do. I feel micromanaged. And so I might resist or not bring my best self. So um, that's another feature of this particular um, uh, system, this type, this uh, type yeah, coaching. And if I could, if I could yeah. add one thing, just ever since I started working with Anne and understanding these different types, there's certain things I notice about people's communication. And, you know, I can say, oh, okay, this, this is a guy that I uh, that I need to worry my worry about because he wants more detail. He's more that Warren Buffett type, and I'm the ENFP just like Ann. And so, what I've learned from Ann is how to kind of spot in the clues, and you'll get that from this assessment and from the the, the coaching and training that we do. Yep. Okay. So, um, uh, so when you get this assessment, you get, of course, your work style, strengths, and blind spots. So that's that's articulated for you. Uh, It will articulate what your individual communication style is like and what are some things that you naturally want to leverage and what are some things you want to add 
to to your skill set. Um, it'll help uh, with co collaborating with coworkers. So you'll get those insights about how to uh, collaborate with coworkers. That was that second key to developing a high performing sales team. And then really uh, most importantly too is influencing your customers and prospects. So um, how do you adjust your language to talk to your your salespeople so uh, and then the type to type feature which is some specific tips so what I like about this particular uh, uh, assessment is the fact that you have online learning you do it when you want to do it uh, and you get some very quick wins because it basically opens up an entire different way of looking at yourself and looking at how you do your work so it's it's like a it's a the quick wins so um, if, if you're interested, um, I, I think it's a very convenient, practical, and easy to use system. Um, it, is, it leverages the latest research on sales team development and it's, it's immediately applicable, lots of quick hits, and it's, and it's uh, cost effective. Now, uh, <clears throat> what I want to do though, is I want to uh, offer this. Um, if you have a sales team of around four or uh, even if it's if it's sales and support team of four or more people and you're the person who kind of decides how you want your training and development to go um, I was I want to give you a code so that you can look at the entire type coach program free of charge so you can go in you can um, sign in you can go through the whole program you can see type to type you can see the coaching videos all of the pieces of, of the type coach actually program. get the assessment <laughs> And you actually get the assessment and you get the report. Um, but then on top of that, too, I want to uh, talk to you afterwards and do a coaching session with you so that we can go over the results. Sometimes when you get reports um, after you've done an assessment, you look at them and, and you just you, you eyeball me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. But I think the real power in it is actually uh, being coached and going over those um, those findings and talking about uh, specific goals and specific ways that you can um, develop your personality to be better at the job that you do. So um, this is a, a $500 value, but I want to give it to decision makers who might be interested in seeing if this would be helpful to their sales team. So you get the program, you get the hour, uh, the hour long coaching session and, um, and that's free of charge. Now, if you are, um, and if you, and if you write that, if you want that, I would like you to email me um, at anholm at anholm.net and write sales team um, in the subject line and you'll get their codes to look at type coach and then the link so that you can schedule your coaching session um, based on however your schedule works for you. So I, I make it as automated as possible for people to, to take advantage of the offer. And they, and so that's how you do it. Now, if you're a part of a smaller team and um, you are only just one guy or two guys, I still want to give you the free coaching session. So um, just write the word coach in the subject line and I'll send you the link so that you can schedule a full hour long uh, coaching session to talk about this topic or anything else in your business uh, that um, I might be able to give you some insights about. So uh, either way, um, there's an offer available to you, either the sales team with the type coach program and the coaching session, or if you're a smaller team, uh, writing coach in the subject line and getting that free coaching session. So um, they're all uh, no obligation. Uh, you can, uh, I'd like to talk to you though. So uh, are there any questions uh, about that or anything else we've talked about so far that I can answer now? Please use that chat box. Mm -hmm. um, while we're waiting for any questions, I, I should just, uh, Praise, praise Ann's program. I Again, I started off as a, a client of Ann's eight, eight years ago when I was running a 3PL, and um, she works with a lot of my clients. She works with me. She's worked with my kids. I can't stress enough how good she is at what she does. The Just the assessment alone is a game changer. When you have that assessment in your hand, I reference mine all the time. But then to have go, go through it with Ann, it's kind of like a wake up call because you go, wow, I <laughs> I had these wasn't playing to them as much as I might. And yeah, I had that those blind spots that uh 
Um, now that I see them on paper and now that Anne's starting to help me mitigate them, it, it's a great feeling. So again, this Ann does a fantastic job and she's uh, being a little modest about that. <laughs> um, so, questions in the chat box, please. <laughs> okay. And if there's any questions, uh, meanwhile, what I'm going to do here too is um, I'm going to put my contact information. So if you want to know more about me or you have some questions or you just want to contact me and say, you know, um, that's not bad in my experience. I want to offer this idea for you to think about or whatever you want to say. Um, my, you can contact me at anholm at anholm.net. Um, my website is anholm.net. You'll notice a, a theme going here. Um, I have a Facebook site uh, where I post um, articles uh, that I have read. I never post anything unless I've fully vetted it. And I think it could be useful to somebody um, either in this space um, or uh, some of my other uh, clients um, have other needs. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. And again, if I tweet something, I make sure I read it first. I will not just push retweet un unless I've seen it. And if I read it, I'll even make sure that I make a comment about it. This is what I saw in the article. So, uh, so follow and, me on Twitter. And, and, and then, there's one question that we didn't answer. Yeah. yeah. So the, so there was a question, and I think this is near and dear to you and I. It's um, salespeople dialing for potential customers every day can be exhausting. How do how do you keep the team motivated? That that is right there why I started talking to Anya years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and here's the thing. So um, and that might be that might even be a question that would uh, come up um, in a coaching session uh, that we would have. So whoever asked that question, please do. Um, uh, you know, contact me and, and we'll dig into it even further. But uh, keeping people motivated, uh, part of it is this idea of just enough challenge that the work is interesting, uh, but enough success that it's rewarding. So you have to look at, you know, if these individuals are um, are not uh, making any headway and every day is a day that there's not much success. Every, anybody will burn out and the only, you know, you can't, you, you can't um, keep people moving if there's no sort of reward in it, uh, et cetera. Now, one of the things that can increase motivation is to branch out. What does that sales role look like? So would that, you know, do you want this individual to maybe part-time, um, you know, uh, write a blog, you know, become an expert in something, um, you know, give them tasks and duties that might make the job a little bit more interesting. Uh, the other thing is to, um, is to equip them with strategies to maximize their personality. This is some of the stuff we were talking about before. So, you know, some of those phone calls might be um, not very successful because of the way they're approaching them. So success has a great way of creating additional motivation. So um, I would love to talk to the individual who um, uh, brought up that question because I would like to look at it yeah. from all the different angles. There's many ways you can look at yeah, that and I, how to motivate people. If I could also... If I could also add something to that, Anne, is uh, when Anne and I first started working together, it was because I was struggling with my sales team. Um, I, I first off couldn't sit myself down to make 100 phone calls, and yet I was asking people to do it. Um, when I started talking to Anne, she said, well, there's other ways to go about getting good leads. And that became kind of my business. My main business <laughs> is helping transportation and logistics company get leads. And there are a million other ways. Um, we've kind of defaulted to you must make 100 phone calls a day. I hear from 3PLs every week saying it doesn't work like it used to. But meanwhile, there's people like myself and Ann who have blogs. We do webinars. We have LinkedIn strategies. There is what Ann always terms the 21st century <laughs> approach to sales. And yep. it, 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 you, can still use, you can still use the phone and make 100 phone calls a day if you want. But there are some really good uh, strategies out there beyond that. Yeah, and that's the, yeah. The, Joe's um, articulated it exactly right. It is 21st century sales skills. How do you, for instance, you know, create a LinkedIn profile that's going to create interest and uh, create meaningful uh, connections? Because it's it's. Uh, uh, you know, without uh, getting too deeply into this, because I know everybody's got to get back to work, but it's one of those subjects that are near and dear to me. And that is the idea that um, 
21st sales, uh, century sales skills have a lot to do with um, becoming an expert so that you're highly useful to your customer, um, developing relationships so, so that individuals know that they're dealing with um, a human entity. I'm, I'm reading a book about the human brand and the human brand uh, in the 21st century still involves humans. It's not all straight technical transactions. So there's things um, that you have to keep in mind when you do 21st century selling and using techniques that worked, um, you know, 20 years ago, uh, generally are, are not going to yield what you're looking for. And um, so that's a whole, that's, you know, maybe I'll just do a webinar on that. That's a whole nother, you know, uh, set <laughs> of things to consider, but yes, it's, you know, it's, uh, there's lots of ways to cre to create those leads, and they're not all around uh, cold calling. Yeah, and lead generation is the heavy lifting in transportation and logistics. Everybody we talk to, and again, we talk to a lot of people in the 3PL space, says the same thing. Uh, once I get in the room, once I have their attention, once they've you know decided to give me their freight bills, I can do a great analysis. I can make a nice pitch right. to, to win the business but I don't get to talk to enough people. That's always what we hear. And, you know, not to, not to be braggy, but Ann and I do get to talk to lots of people because we do blog and we do have webinars and, um, you know, email marketing and other things that allow us to connect with a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I know we got to wrap it up here, but I, I do think I would like to do a um, 21st century sales skills piece because actually the, uh, the the whole piece about personality and who you are and what you do well actually folds into how you present yourself even on social media. The more you know how you are and the more you know about your strengths and blind spots and all of that, the more effectively you can use social media to make 21st century sales context. So that'll be a different topic. Uh, different day. Uh, please, uh, again, you know, here's the offer. And if you, you know, to take advantage of it, sales team, if you're uh, a larger group, uh, smaller, just write the word coach. Um, and I'll send you those links so you can schedule time with me so we can uh, talk about it. And again, please do, um, you know, link in with me, um, go to my website, et cetera. Um, I appreciate your time today. Uh, any other questions or comments before we um, wrap it up and everybody gets back to work? No. I would like to thank everybody for coming and, and thank you so much for coming. It's always enlightening. Thank uh, you. This, this is uh this is this is a lot of information to digest and it's all good. Yep, yep. And this will we're gonna have this particular uh webinar on the YouTube channel. So it'll be you know, if you wanna go back and check anything out, uh, Joe will be uploading it to the YouTube channel. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, everybody enjoy your weather, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is and wherever you are. And uh, we nice, will nicer in Atlanta. We'll see you again um, at, for the next Logistics of Logistics webinar uh, sometime soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.